Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. This is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology for the week of November 27th. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I am taping this as we come up to Thanksgiving, and I so appreciate you taking the time to listen. And for those of you who provide feedback, I love it, as well as everyone who has posted a review on their favorite podcast player. So if you do appreciate it and have the time, I would love a review. Next for an announcement, on December 21st, I'm going to be doing a 2023 astrology predictions panel with two of my favorite astrologers and friends and collaborators, Tiffany Herlich of Wise Skies Collective and Sarah Lahar, or I should say El Harar, who is Astro Auntie. So it will be at 12 p.m. Pacific time. There will be a link in the show notes as well as you can go to my website to check it out. The theme of this week is Foggy Bottoms. We are now past the heart of eclipse season, although you still will see events related to the themes coming up in the news and the collective and in your own life potentially. Eclipses, these huge lunations, have a large tail. Last week, and you can go back and listen to it, I talked about the eclipse season in relation to what's happening with Twitter, as well as with the election. But for this week, let's talk about some other topics. And just for a reminder, a big feature of this time is that Mars, the planet of action, drive, assertion, conflict, went retrograde. So appearing to go backwards from our perspective on Earth is just an optical illusion, but the topics that the planet governs become wonky, essentially. We also often see delays, restrictions, reoccurrences of previous events, disagreements, conflicts related to retrogrades. And it's in the sign of Gemini, which is an air sign that rules all things communication as well as transportation. So there's been a lot of transportation accidents that we've seen while Mars is retrograde. It's also square the planet Neptune in Pisces, which is the planet of illusions and delusions. Mars square Neptune is con artist energy. Yeah, it's someone who is driven to take action, Mars retrograde square, Neptune, I should say, someone who is driven to take deceptive actions in order to trick people. Now, not everyone who has this transit, this aspect, excuse me, is someone who's deceptive, but that's one of the shadow sides of the energy. Some people are just very good at artistic things or musical things or dancing or Yeah, things like that, Neptunian type topics and using their bodies or their minds for these topics. So yeah, but we have seen people in the news who embody this energy. So Elizabeth Holmes, who was the founder and CEO of Theranos, the company that said it could do like hundreds of medical tests from a drop of blood. There's a wonderful podcast called Bad Blood, if you haven't listened to it, about this whole story, I found it just absolutely fascinating. She was like this wonder kind who got billions of dollars from people based on this complete falsehood that this piece of equipment and this technology could do these testings. And so she was sentenced recently during this eclipse season to 11 years in prison for her deceptive actions. 
And this is very in line with the eclipse because not only was, you know, this con artist aspect active, but Saturn is in the square with Uranus. So people, criminals, Uranian people who are doing lawless actions had the book thrown at them by the authorities, Saturn. So we see that with her. We also see that Unfortunately, Mars also rules athletes. And so Brittany Griner, who is the athlete who was arrested earlier this year in Russia, was sentenced to, I believe it's nine years at a prison camp. So Mars Mars in Gemini really feels like a basketball player because there's, you know, a lot of footwork and, and running and moving around and transportation in this athletic competition that basketball is this game. Yeah. And Mars rules athletes. I think I already said that, but that's okay. Gemini likes us to do things twice. So she has gotten like a horrifically harsh punishment for having marijuana or hashish or something in her luggage in Russia. Another con person story is Sam Bankman Freed, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's 30 years old. He's in his Saturn return, which is a time where we can have consequences for actions. We're expected to, you know, move from childhood to adulthood, take on more maturity, responsibility, and things like that. Most everyone has like some big things that happen around age 29 during their Saturn return, but it's not just a day. It's like an extended period, a year or so. So people who have Saturns in the sign of Aquarius natally are having their Saturn returns. So he was the head of a cryptocurrency exchange. I know nothing about crypto. It's called FTX, except the fact that I'm not giving my money to anyone putting it up in the ether. And if I lose my password, my money evaporates. But anyway, it's lost $32 billion. This company has lost $32 billion. A lot of people may never get back. So that story has hit the news during this eclipse season. So he's likely going to be in a lot of trouble for this, but it's been highlighted now. So this is another. And he was a con artist. Like he deceived people and got their money in a deceptive way, as well as used funds for things inappropriately and did not keep proper paperwork and things around the business. So Mars Retrograde and Gemini also like just disastrous paperwork or records also speaks to this energy. There have been some really horrific murders. Mars, Mars kills, Mars severs, Mars separates. It's, you know, anger, it's rage. And in the sign of Gemini, we can think about children as well. So these people aren't children, but they're they're college students. So they're still in the being educated. And so on the same day, one in the morning and one at night, there was mass murders of students. And this was on the day of last Sunday. And well, when you listen to this, there'll be two Sundays ago when the moon was in Cancer and there was this big water trine in the sky. And so when the moon was in Cancer, it was opposing Pluto and in a trine with all these Scorpio planets and in a trine with Jupiter and Neptune that make everything bigger and magnify things. So what happened in the morning, there were these students in the University of Iowa, four students were murdered with a knife and they do not know who did it. So that's very Mars retrograde and Gemini, like a, a knife, a weapon that you use in your hand. And they don't, they have no idea who did it. Square Neptune. Seems like they were out drinking and partying. Neptune rules like alcohol and things like that. There were also two other women in the house who heard nothing or they just assumed the people were partying, but that's like a big mystery. That's one of the stories of this eclipse season. And then that evening, while the moon was still in Cancer, there was the murder of three UVA football players. Again, football players, Mars and Gemini, you know, athletes who like spend a lot of time on their feet and do, you know, fast footwork by one of their classmates. They were coming back from a field trip to a museum and this guy got on the bus and murdered three of them. So it's very sad, you know, 
seven young people in college murdered on the same day that we had those grand trines. Grand trines, easy flow of energy. It's a closed system. It's emotional. Yeah, just very, very sad. So there are three big things I want you to think about this week. The first is that we're going to have a first quarter moon at eight degrees of Pisces on Wednesday. So the sun will be in Sagittarius. The moon will be at eight degrees Pisces. I really like this energy. It's interesting. Mars retrograde is in a trine with Saturn on this day. This can be about responsibility for anything people have done wrong easy, like getting caught, like you're trying to do something sneaky and you get caught. I wouldn't recommend it on this week. It also feels like with Mars is how we take action. You may get some like nice determination in order to get what you want to get done. So I like it for that. Mars is also opposite Venus. So this Mars opposite Venus transit can be really good for creativity in writing or artistically with the moon in Pisces, like music is coming to me, as well as it can be like very, very sexy. Now you could have conflicts with people who you're in a romantic relationship with. So keep that in mind. Like don't put yourselves on opposite sides of an issue. And Mercury's also conjunct Venus. So Yeah, this could be like an argument over love could be something around this. So keep that in mind. But I think with this first quarter moon, I'm predicting that Donald Trump will be indicted between this week and next week. I think it's going to be on Tuesday of this week where Mercury is opposite Mars. It might wait But definitely, I think by the full moon, we'll see. I could be totally wrong, but looking at his chart, looking at these transits, I really see this as Mars retrograde, taking reckless actions in the sign of Gemini to have a street protest opposite Venus and Mercury and Sagittarius, inviting people down to the Capitol to march on the Capitol. Sagittarius can also rule lawlessness. So this opposition, and then there's that Mars trine Saturn, I think he might be indicted. We shall see. Because also the royal fixed star, this is the next thing I want you to think about. The royal fixed star on Teres is highlighted this week. I love the fixed stars. And Antares is one of the four royal Persian stars. It's in the constellation of Scorpio, but it's actually at nine Sagittarius right now. And it's about obsessive passion. It's the watcher of the West. It's also talked about being the god of the dead. People can have great success, like I talk about with these royal stars. There's always a nemesis that can be their undoing. So they can be their own undoing by getting too obsessed with what they're trying to achieve and not taking into account anything else. It's also been called a rival to Mars because it can be brighter in the sky than Mars when they, they're close to each other and they're both red. If you want to learn more about these stars, you can look at, I recommend Bernadette Brady's star and planet combinations. It's on the list in my Amazon star. Also, Astrology King has a great website and has done amazing work with fixed stars. So keep this in mind. You don't want to seek unnecessary intensity or attract confrontations or challenges You may see a lot of behind the scenes actions going on in your work where people are in like a form of combat. And I see this with the Mercury opposite Mars, like that can be some kind of conflict amongst people. Yeah, I also feel like there's danger from fire this week with this fixed star being highlighted for several days. So be extra careful with candles. Sagittarius is the fire energy that's like a candle flickering flame. It's mutable energy. There can also be success in battles. I'm hoping that, you know, Ukraine has some achievement this week. Zelensky, the leader of 
of Ukraine's palace, Athene. The asteroid of strategy is within three degrees of this fixed star. It gives mental alertness and daredevils. There's also danger to the right eye with this. So keep those things in mind as you move through the week. The last thing I want you to be aware of is that Neptune, the planet of illusions, delusions, the fog, the mist, it's compassion, it's spirituality, it's you know, the realms we cannot see, the liminal spaces. It stations direct at 22 Pisces on Saturday. So five days before and after a planet stations to switch directions, the topics that it rules can be extra intense. So especially if you have any planets around 20 to 25 of the mutable signs of Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces and Virgo, you may like feel this energy. You may feel very drained. Neptune dissolves things. So you like it can dissolve energy. You may feel like inspired, hopefully, and creative. You may also feel that confusion aspect of this. Neptune is like Vaseline on a mirror. Like you can't see things clearly. Some people may be feeling aimless. So don't worry if you're really tired, especially because Mars is squaring Neptune. You may also feel very emotional, so just let the tears flow if they need to come. Check in on people who you're worried about who have like depression issues or, you know, have said anything about not wanting to be here anymore. Neptune rules escapism as well as like drug and alcohol problems. Be aware people could overdo it or, you know, have like get sick from alcohol or drugs or accidentally overdose, or there may be stories about poisoning or things in the news. So keep that in mind. There also could be like huge storms with lots of water. Jupiter is co-present with Neptune in the sign of Pisces, which is a water sign. So yeah, or in the winter, there could be like really, really bad storms around the time that Neptune is stationing to go direct. On Sunday, the word of the day is caustic, meaning able to burn or corrode tissue by chemical action, as well as sarcastic in a scathing or bitter manner, like saying something snappy. And Mercury, the planet of communication, is at 16 Sagittarius in a King Kunks with Uranus in Taurus. So like saying something really snappy can have an overreaction from someone that feels very caustic. I love Sagittarius energy, but Mercury's in detriment in the sign and people can be tactless or say foot in the mouth types of things. We enter the day with the moon in Capricorn and at 2.05 p.m. Pacific time, it moves into Aquarius. Both of these signs, Capricorn and Aquarius, are ruled by Saturn and Saturn is squaring Uranus. So like saying something sarcastic, caustic, or scathing could lead to like a big fight. So just keep that in mind and be nice to people you meet out and about as well as your loved one. On Monday, the word of the day is consequences. This is the day that Mars retrograde in Gemini will try and Saturn and Aquarius. They're both at 19 degrees. So there can be unexpectedly harsh consequences from impulsive actions or inattention. Like you look away from the road, you get in a car accident. Then there could also be sabotage that could have harsh results. Again, I'm thinking about Iran what is going on there with the protests for women's rights, as well as in Ukraine with this horrific war. And how interesting that Iran is selling these um, drones that are unmanned to Russia to fight the war in Ukraine. And that's very Mars retrograde square Neptune, these harsh weapons where they, nobody even needs to be in them and can cause like massive devastation. Yeah, very, very disturbing, that news story. But anyway, you know, Aquarius is a fixed sign. 
So when we're in the fixed signs, because we'll come up against talking to Uranus in a harsh way and then Saturn, and for the moon being in Aquarius, it's going to square Uranus and then conjunct Saturn. So we remember, we do not break down, we break through. Venus is also King Kung's Uranus this day. So this can be ruptures to relationships, potentially due to what was said yesterday. On Tuesday, the word of the day is arguments. This could be a tough day. You know, an argument can just be stating your case, but it also can be conflict. So the moon enters Pisces at 4.15 p.m. There's always a sense of endings when the moon is in Pisces. This is the day that Mercury in Sagittarius opposes Mars in Gemini at 19 degrees. This could be really important for a lot of people who have planets around, you know, 20 or so degrees of the mutable signs, because on June 10th, 2021, we had a solar eclipse at 19 degrees of Gemini. And next week's full moon is part of this lunation cycle. You know, I talk about the 27-month lunation cycle where every nine months there's an activation that's progressing where you may feel a story growing in your life that has important pivot points. So yeah, this could be something could become illuminated that was seeded back then in June of 2020. I think this could be the day that Trump could be indicted. It's one of the days that looking at his son, Uranus, and North Node are all clustered right around that 19 degrees of Gemini in his very public 10th house. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. On Wednesday, the word of the day is disharmony. This is the day we have the first quarter moon at 8 Pisces at 6.36 a.m. The new moon of this lunation family was March 12th at 12 degrees of Pisces. So now we have the sun in Sagittarius squaring that point in your chart and the moon in Pisces. So if you have planets around that part of your chart between 8 and 12 Pisces or any of the mutable signs, there may be a story that has a next step to it. I'm excited because my north node is right there. So You know, we take action at the first quarter moon because we want to change something. There's some sense of disharmony that needs to be adjusted so that we can move forward. We feel some internal sense of disharmony. Now, this is the day Venus is opposite Mars. So this could be like you have this creative urge. It also can be very sexy. It could stimulate sexual passion with someone that you're in a relationship with. But it can also lead to problems like Mars opposite Venus can be like sex without emotion where one person feels a little used or dominated over. So keep that in mind, like whisper a few sweet enough things before you make your move. On Thursday, the word of the day is flaky. People may be impulsive and make commitments that they're unable or do not plan to keep. On this day, the Mercury, the planet of communication, squares Neptune, the planet of illusions and delusions. So someone may be trying to confuse you with what they're saying deliberately or get one over on you or just not thinking clearly and make a poor decisions and think they can do something they can't. Remember, Mercury's in detriment in Sagittarius. Now, this is a day Venus sextile Saturn. So you're so happy to connect and make a commitment to something one. Venus rules relationships, Saturn rules commitments, but you were confused, you couldn't do it. So like deals made on this day may fall through is essentially what could happen. The moon enters the sign of Aries at 8.40 p.m. Aries is fiery. So you may feel an extra burst of energy about that time. It's 8.40 p.m. Pacific time. And notice if you do, and you may get like a zip zoom energy to you. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and there's a real switch and change when we move from that mutable water to the cardinal energetic fire. So this may be when you feel like, okay, I want to make a decision and go forward. On Friday, the word of the day is lighthearted. There's not much going on in the sky. It's Friday. It's Venus's day. Have some fun. 
Aries energy is youthful. The moon's in Aries, youthful, energetic, wanting to compete, achieve. It'd be great to play like a game night this day. Yeah, I love that. On Saturday, the word of the day is dazed. This is the day Neptune stations direct at 22 Pisces. So you may feel more hopeful coming as the days go on. On this day, Venus squares Neptune. So be careful who you meet on this day. You may have your rose colored glasses on and just think they're the cat's meow. This is uh, like beer goggles energy where somebody impulsively takes someone home from the bar and wakes up the next day and like, is what happened here? Yeah, it's a great day to chill out and listen to music. Yeah, watch for overindulgence and all of that stuff. And like, do something compassionate for someone. This is a great day to give to charity or yeah, make some kind of commitment, maybe even a monthly commitment to a cause. I love that. Yeah. So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at a Celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories about what you experienced during eclipse season or let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. Take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, Please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 